now heal scars of Moscow, and we can listen in as England face their World Cup nemesis. The television microphone on the roof of the dugouts here could help Friday evening's match provide more than merely a measure of this young England squad's progress under Gareth Southgate. It might give us a fascinating insight into Southgate's management style, how he addresses his players, how he converses with his staff, and the dynamic between the England manager and his trusted assistant Steve Holland. In a stadium that will be empty bar a few hundred officials, staff and journalists, it may even be possible to hear how the players address one another, never mind the referee, during what promises to be a vastly different experience from the World Cup semi-final in Moscow in front of 78,000 spectators three months ago. When West Ham contested one of these ghost games in 1980, the players, Sir Trevor Brooking recalled in an interview with the BBC this week, could hear the radio commentators. Martin Tyler, who commentated on that game for ITV and is here on Friday performing the same role for Sky, recalls a non-league response to the six goals that were scored at Zipton Park on that October evening. As Tyler rightly pointed out in those same silky smooth tones on Thursday night, if 500 die-hurt England fans gather on the grass bank that rises behind one of the goals, and the word is the authorities will be in no position to move them off public land, there could yet be a bit of an atmosphere inside this 8,000-seat arena. But Southgate remains mindful of the potential for embarrassment during what will be the first England international behind closed doors and is understood to have asked his players to be conscious of the fact that a liberal use of industrial language could cause a stir. That said, he seems to be in no mood to completely gag his players. Southgate rightly pointed out that the responsibility ultimately rests with the broadcasters and where they place their microphones. He also made the point that, having spent the last two years persuading these players to be more vocal, he was not about to dissuade them from the odd full and frank exchange on the pitch. This, after all, is a competitive match, however surreal it might feel, and an opportunity to heal some of the scars of that defeat at the Lezhniki, when Southgate's team came within 22 minutes of reaching only England's second World Cup final. The manager insists on looking forward rather than back, with his focus more on how his team can develop with the injection of fresh talent as well as the recall of gifted players such as Ross Barkley. If Barkley plays, and there is a good chance he will, it will be interesting to see if he can provide much-needed creativity in the England midfield. For Southgate, of course, the challenge is how he responds to the problems that arose when England last faced Luka Modric and his teammates. Injuries have forced him to change some of the personnel, but does he change the system too? He has looked at switching to a back four in training this week, raising the intriguing prospect of another radical change in tactics. Given the style of players who'd have been recruited of late, wide men like Jadon Sancho spring to mind, a back four might be better suited to this squad as it continues to evolve. Nations League has not generated a great deal of excitement, but Southgate made it clear last night he wants to win this game, and, having seen Croatia suffer a 6-0 thumping in Spain after his own side had lost by a significantly narrower margin, he may well fancy his chances. On Thursday there was even a bit of needle, with Modric reiterating the view that the English were guilty of arrogance with their football's coming home song during the World Cup. John Stones dismissed that on Thursday, arguing that England's players had always treated their opponents with the utmost respect. Southgate nodded, adding that Modric had failed to appreciate the self-deprecating British humour that inspired the song in the first place. Southgate then amusingly suggested a few episodes of Faulty Towers might provide the Real Madrid midfielder with a better insight. Alongside Modric Croatia coach Zlatko Dalek boldly named his team, perhaps with the intention of reminding his opponents that a certain Ivan Rakitic will be among the ranks. Invited to do the same, Southgate declined, preferring to keep England's hosts guessing and even dismissing concerns over a lack of supporters. It would be no different, he said, from how it is every day at the training ground. 
the presence of cameras and microphones aside, and of course. Where are you?